Hey guys, today's species spotlight is on the Amphiprion ocellaris, which is also known as the common clownfish. Now, this species of clownfish is really a mainstay in the hobby. Uh, it is a commercially produced fish at this point, widely available and usually available from commercial hatcheries, so that's a really positive thing. Uh, we'll go about this species spotlight in the way we normally do. We'll talk a little bit about the origins of the fish, then we'll get into the behavior, uh, you know, tank size, tank setup, tank mates, their comportment, um, type of tank you should be keeping them in, get into some feeding water and then water conditions and then a summary of the upsides of this uh, spectacular little marine fish. And uh, so let's, let's get into it. Now, the origins of the Ocellaris are really from Southeast Asia, uh, up to Northwest Australia, and then up to the Ryukyu Islands of, uh, of Japan. So it's quite widely spread out. Uh, it's typically found in coral reefs, for example, uh, up to about 15 meters in depth is a typical kind of depth range, uh, or small protected uh, lagoons. And they're often seen in the company of larger species of uh, an enemy, for example, Heteractus magnifica, Stichodactyla uh, gigantea, for example, are two species that typically would house, uh, that, these, that these clowns would form a symbiotic relationship with. Uh, obviously, is very large in enemies. Uh, just by their name, you can you can tell that they get up to anywhere from a foot to two feet in diameter. Uh, with the Heteractus, the Magnifica, getting up to almost three feet in diameter, potentially in the ocean. So, if you're thinking of keeping that in an aquarium, well, obviously, uh, it's got to be a really big tank of at least 150 to 200 gallons, which means a lot of other resources have to be developed. Uh, you know, devoted to that as well. Now, typically in the ocean, they're found in pairs. They can have a third member with them, uh, or it's, you will see sometimes see them with a pair and uh, some smaller specimens as well. Uh, in a kind of a family group, should anything happen to uh, you know the largest one, for example, which would be the female in this case, uh, then the male will normally convert, and the, the next largest fish. Uh, smaller than that male would then become a male or or become the male of the pair. Okay guys now let's get into the behavior and tank tank conditions and how the fish behaves in captivity in general. Uh, it's generally a great community fish uh, for most smaller reef tanks even some larger ones obviously depending on what other tank members you're keeping. Uh, very good in reef type setups. Um, and it's a type of fish that uh, you know will swim out in the open. It's it's not something that's going to be hiding. It's not a shy species of fish. It's it really makes for a nice centerpiece in a smaller type setup. Uh, a lot of people will will wonder whether it really has to be kept with uh, an, an anemone or not. An anemone. And uh, it does not have to be. They actually do very well without an anemone. Uh, they'll spawn without without the presence of an anemone and form pairs and completely uh, behave normally. So there's no real need to keep them with one, although it's super cool to do it. And uh, obviously the larger species are out of the question, but uh, they will adapt to other species as well. Just make sure that when you are trying to keep them with an anemone, that the size of the anemone is, is a fairly good sized one for the species that you have, and that the clownfish are not extra large. You wanna have smaller clowns, in a kind of a little bit larger of an anemone that usually makes for the best combination. Otherwise, it typically overwhelms small specimens. They end up going and hiding the anemones, that is. And that, of course, is not good for their health or their long-term survival. Now, all clownfish are born uh, protandrous hermaphrodites, which means they're all males when they're born. And then as they develop and grow and start to form pairs, there's a larger one that will emerge. That one will become the female, and then the uh, you know slightly smaller, or smaller one that's less uh, more subordinate is uh, is the male. It's really a female-driven relationship. The female is really the more uh, aggressive of the two uh, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to a male and a female in in a pair of. Uh, of clowns. So the Ocellaris in general as a, a species is not a really an aggressive clown. It's one that's a lot more suitable for a lot of community setups. That's not always the case with a lot of other clownfish uh, like for example tomato clowns or maroon clowns. They can be quite uh, 
quite aggressive towards other fish as well and be really overly dominant. Now, the average lifespan of the uh, Ocellaris is uh, approximately five to 10 years, although you will see uh, a lot of information out there about people, and, and I'm talking about in captivity, um, you will see a lot of information out there about people keeping them quite a bit longer than that. It's been noted that they go over 10 years for sure, and I'm sure that's a possibility as well. So it is a long-lived marine fish, and uh, unfortunately super easy to keep. Uh, when you're mixing in other tank mates, of course, avoid uh, larger species, uh, you don't want any large predatorial species with them, but they do for the most part mix with most other uh, marines really well. Now if you're going to keep them alone in a, in, a, uh, in a small reef type setup or uh, you know a fish only type setup with live rock, then you really should uh, consider keeping them in at least a 20 to 30 gallon tank for them to be uh, comfortable. Now, uh, one last note, um, what uh, is another important thing to cover in this section is the fact that, uh, you know, what's the difference between an Ocellaris and, uh, and a Percula? Because they certainly do look very, they, they look the same. Well, it's really in the dorsal that you see the difference. The Ocellaris has a larger dorsal fin, it's got 11 dorsal rays, and it will be fairly noticeably larger. The, the Percula has a squatter, more round, uh, kind of fits the contour of the body more, it's definitely shorter. That's really the main giveaway when you're looking at these two species. Okay guys, let's get a little bit into the feeding and water conditions for the uh, Ocellaris. Uh, it's like like other clownfish species, they, they readily feed on any commercial diet. As I mentioned, they come these days usually from a commercial hatchery, so they're well acclimated to pellets, flake foods, various frozen foods. Just vary it up. Don't just stick with uh, one or two frozen foods that they tend to prefer. Uh, make sure that you give them a good complete uh, pellet diet as well. Get them used to dry foods in case you have to go on vacation or what have you. You can also put an automatic feeder on the tank and you need that, that nutritional variety. It's important. So keep it varied. There's no shortage of foods that they will take uh, from mussels to shrimp to, uh, to other marine organisms that exist, clams. Uh, that kind of thing, you know, chop them up, no problem at all, easy to feed. Um, now, when it comes to uh, when it comes to water conditions, basically uh, the temperature range is anywhere from uh, 77 to 80 degrees, it's really ideal in the aquarium. 77 really perhaps a little bit better as a target, uh, which is about 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, they do well at that, at that temperature and of course, uh, so will your corals. Um, the pH is typically uh, within 8 to 8.8 to 8.4 is a good range to shoot for, like what you would typically maintain for your reef at a specific gravity. 1.021 to 1.025 is perfect for them. Um, water movement can be pretty strong. Uh, they do well in a reef that requires a lot of movement. That's not an issue for uh, clownfish, very capable of dealing with it. Given where they live in the ocean, it's not really at the deepest depth, so there, there, there tends to be quite a bit of tidal action or water movement in those areas. And of course lighting, it's very flexible. They'll do just as well in some of the dimmer conditions or the brighter conditions that are required uh, as you would have to maintain for a reef. To summarize, the uh, Amphiphryon uh, Ocellaris is a great beginner fish. Uh, it is, uh, you know, grows to a reasonable size, three to four inches, four, females of course being closer to four inches for a large one. Uh, very hardy, adapts to many types of food, uses a great variety of foods you can feed them. They're a great feature fish for 20 to 30 gallon uh, small reefs. Um, and, you know, as easy as they are and, uh, and as widely available and all the different color choices, they add an extra dimension which is great for the uh, more advanced reef keeper that wants to take things to another level with perhaps breeding because they so easily breed in a, in a properly set up small reef. Uh, it allows the more advanced keeper to, to take your first shot at raising uh, marine fish larvae. Clownfish is a great way to start with that. So it really offers something to everybody at all levels of, uh, of the marine fish hobby or the marine keeping hobby. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Until the next time.